So, um, a very exciting thing happened. Billy Feaster finished. He got all the um, spray film insulation up, the sheet rock tape and bed texture, and then I painted this morning. And my goodness, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Here, let me show you a couple things that I think are really cool. So we got these uh, bullnose corners, these rounded corners, and I just think that they're gorgeous. Um, we're starting to get outlets in here, which is really great. Um, and I know that a lot of times I ask you guys to use your imagination. I'm like, put on your thinking cap and use your imagination because this is gonna be really cool. But then every day gets a little bit cooler. And so I'm super excited because we're getting real, real close. Like once we're at this stage, it's just cabinets, countertops, you know, plumbing fixtures, floors, doors, trim, and then we're pretty much done. So, and some of the driveway and stuff like that. But probably another two weeks and I think this will be ready. So if you guys are thinking about buying this, you best jump on it because it's gonna get sold real quick. All right, so I wanna talk about this because I've been thinking about this a lot. Um, Jesus said in the, in the Bible, I think it's in Matthew, that whoever helps one of my disciples, whoever so much as gives him a cup of cold water, he will not lose his reward in heaven. And I've been thinking about that because, here's why, because so many people help me out and so many people are kind to me and they just want to be nice and helpful and, and kind of stand behind me and everything. And I just want to say thank you so much to all those people. But I also want to say that when it comes time to Judgment Day and God looks at me and goes, what do you, John, have to say about this person? I'm going to be like, let me just tell you, they helped me when I needed help. And I don't have a bad thing to say about them. But I know what you're thinking. John, I did you dirty. And uh, I talked trash about you behind your back or maybe I cheated on you or lied or stole from you or whatever. And I want you to know, I think about this a lot too. I forgive you. Just take that burden off of you. That's not something, I don't keep track of that stuff, right? I don't, I don't sit there and go, ooh, this person makes me mad because that's unhealthy. That's not good for you. So I don't do that stuff. So if, if you did me dirty, I just want you to know I forgive you. And if I did something nice for you, I want you to know I probably don't remember it. <laughs> if, you, if you come to me and say, hey, remember we did that nice thing? I will be at a total loss. Like, when did I ever do anything nice for you? And that's a good way to live your life because if you don't keep track of who owes you and, and you don't keep track of who d did you wrong, but you do keep track of who helped you, I just think that makes the world a better place. All right, so I'm gonna get back to work and I am so excited to show you guys what we got coming up. So we did not make a video yesterday. We were pretty busy. Um, we did quite a bit of stuff and I'm not gonna bore you with all the details because you guys got better things to do. But it dawned on me, probably a lot of you guys are not ever gonna put in all new cabinets in your kitchen yourself. But if you want to, it's pretty simple. So what you wanna do is first you wanna do your upper cabinets. And the reason why is because it's hard to lean over this and do this. So it's easier if you do the uppers first and then do your lowers, okay? So these are individual boxes that you buy at Home Depot. So this is a two foot and this is a two foot and that's a 30 inch by one foot and that's a one foot by 30 inch. And this is a three foot, okay? So you find your studs. And um, a lot of people, at some point in my life, somebody said, John, do you even own a stud finder? And I'm like, a mirror? Yeah, I got a mirror, but I don't need that. So <clears throat> where your outlets are, usually on one side or the other, there's gonna be a stud, okay? So you can tap, and you can tell it right there, there's gonna be a stud. And you can see, get closer over here. But that's where I screwed, right? And then, see how that sounds solid? There's a screw right there, and right there, and then in the corners, you're always gonna have them, and so on. So there's a strip down here, and you screw into that strip, and then on the top, up there, there's another, uh, another strip that's similar to that. Okay, so you screw those, and then up in the tops, you screw one cabinet to the other, and then that holds them up tight, so that this is even and flush and the same height, right? So that's what you want. And then eventually we love the doors and everything. Okay, so. Maybe you're thinking to yourself, this is highly more likely that you're gonna put in a new hood vent microwave. Okay, so that looks like this right here. And uh, you see these over your stove all the time. So in case you don't have an imagination, just put your thinking cap on. This is gonna be the sink. Obviously there will be a garbage disposal. This will be the dishwasher right here. Then we got cabinet space. Then we're gonna have a stove and a hood vent microwave. Over there's gonna be a fridge. Okay, so the first thing is that they give you a template, okay? And you take this template up and it tells you, hey, put us a hole here, here, here and then here, right? And so then it tells you what size holes, and if you have a drill bit set like I do, and you're like, oh, I need an inch and a half, I need a five eighths. And then you get it, and then you drill up in here. And the big hole is to put your um, 
plug through, and then the plug comes and plugs up into here. If you don't have one, you have to put one in. And then there's two holes. So what happens, and I'm gonna show you kind of step by step, but I can't do everything because it's just being a camera person. So this is gonna end up going here, and on the back of the microwave, it catches in, and you come up, and then there's two screws that hold it up and suck it up in there. And that's really what holds the microwave. So you wanna make sure that this is in something solid. You wanna make sure that you're in your stud. So once again, there's a stud. There's one you can tell because there's a there's an outlet down here that's nailed to, you. and then right here. So really the two corners and then one right here. And we'll just put some screws in that. We'll get these holes drilled, and then I will show you the next step. And I want you to know that no matter how far you push the envelope, it will still be stationary. Oh hey, so as the prophecy foretold, the microwave's in. Come closer, I'm gonna show you how this works. Okay, I can't uh, do everything with you because I'm actually doing it. See these little hooks right here and there's little notches in the microwave? So you, you um, set the microwave in there and then you tilt it up, right? And then there's a hole and this um, cord goes through the hole and then there's two screws and the screws go into the top of the microwave, it's got a washer on it. And then you screw that up and then tighten it up and then plug it in, that's pretty important. And then you open the door. You gotta leave the instructions for whoever's gonna buy the house because they'll be like, how do you use a microwave? So, like, I got very confused on how to use a microwave. I don't really cook a lot, I think you guys know that. But I did put a potato in the microwave and there's this button that says frozen pizza and so I hit that button and I waited quite a while. Obviously we're not power so it made it more difficult but it was still a potato and I was just like, I don't think I understand how things really work. Speaking of, I don't understand how things really work. This girl, and this is embarrassing, uh, said to me, we should be friends with benefits. And I'm like, you are insane. I'm not that kind of a guy. If you think that I'm gonna pay for your 401k and pay for your health insurance just to be my friend, you are crazy. I'm not dumb. <laughs> so, many of you probably sit around thinking all day long, how do you put up cordless mini blinds? I've seen these things. I don't want my kids to get tangled up and you know, <clears throat> do bad things. Well, I'm about to show you from open up a box to done. Okay, so these come closer. Sorry, closer. See, this says 35 by 64. That's your width and that's your height, okay? So I know that these are three by five windows, which is a 36, but then you got a half inch of sheetrock on this side, which is 35, and they're 64 long, or sorry, they're 60 inches long, and that's a 64, so that's okay, it's a little bit long. So we're gonna open up the box, all right? And then there's a box of hardware in here. We're gonna open this up. And if you already know what you're looking for, which I do, then I'm gonna get the screws yeah. and that piece and that piece and like this. And then these two and the rest of that stuff. Okay, so these things come closer. These clips hold the balance, and I'll show you what that means. So that snapped into place, right? Like that. Then we gotta get screws. When you see how easy this is, you're gonna be like, why did I pay somebody to hang my blinds when I write it myself? I don't know. Maybe you're lazy. Maybe you just don't know. But I'm here to teach you. So I'm cool like that. Alright, so we're gonna get these things, okay? And what happens is it snaps in and then it locks in here, right? So these screw up to the top. <clears throat> All the way around the window, there's gonna be a stud, okay? Up at the top of the uh, uh, header, so they'll probably be. You know, wood along here and all the way, really all the way around there. So, these ones I'm gonna put on the inside. You can also put them up here like that if you wanted to, but I'm not gonna do that. Oh, <clears throat> Let's see how bad I am. Hmm. Not that bad. Get this thing. 
snap it in, this will turn your whatever. And this is your balance piece, and it's got a little piece that locks in here to these balance clips, right? So it's so easy, even a caveman can do it. And that's pretty much it. Center that up, and then these just open, or you get whatever, and close, and then obviously you can turn. You've done it. Yeah, you install the windows, and then you put the guys in the box and just throw stuff in there. And you're done. So, uh, I realize I haven't made any videos today, and I'm sorry. We were uh, doing a tile for the shower. So, come on in here. Let's take a look around. We did, um, it's a pretty cool shower. It's got two shower heads. So, there's a shower head over here. We've got a soap dish that we made. Obviously, nothing secure yet. There's a bench over here. Um, and then on this side, there's another shower head um, and another. Um, sub dish. And then we're going to have pebble stone on the floor and we're going to have a granite, um, a black granite seat here and we're going to have a black granite um, ledge on this and then obviously a shower card. <clears throat> so we are pretty excited about that. We're about to detile around this thing. Go ahead and show it. Right here. Um, so that should be pretty neat too. We may get that done today. We'll see. But um, what do you want to talk about? Hmm. I mean, a lot of people are like, John, how long have you been building houses and how long have you been doing construction? Like, can I do as much as you on day one? I did have somebody that was like, I'd like to take you out for coffee and kind of pick your brain for about 15 minutes and learn everything you know. And I'm like, bro, it won't take you a full 15 minutes. I mean, we're gonna have plenty of time to cuddle afterwards, trust me. But to let you know how long I've been building, <clears throat> I actually built the log cabin that I was born in. So think on that tonight. Also, um, here's something to think about too. A lot of you guys I know are having a real hard time with insomnia. I can tell everybody talks about it constantly. And, and this is what I think, right? Your brain knows that your body needs to heal. And so you need to sleep and rest. And so it makes up movies inside your head. We call them dreams. And then that keeps your interest and you're like, oh, I'm off in another land. It's like watching TV, but it's in your brain. Um, and then you stay asleep as long as you need to. But maybe your dreams aren't that interesting. And so your body's like, um, this is lame. I think it's going to wake up. So maybe you should dream bigger and have more of an imagination. That way you can sleep better. Also, the other, the other theory that I heard is that if you can't sleep, it's because somebody else is dreaming about you. And I just want to tell you, I can't sleep either. <laughs> so please, whoever it is, stop dreaming about me. It's not going to happen. Good morning. I hope that you guys have done something with your morning productive so that you can feel good about yourself. I know I have. I poured that pan. You can't see it because the lighting in here just got awful. We're going to get power soon, but inspectors, you know. Anyway, this morning we laid all this um, tufts around for the jacuzzi. And obviously it's still a dirty mess. Uh, and we still need to grout it. We need to grout in here and put the pebble stone on the granite and things like that. But we're about to lay the shower uh, tile in the other bathroom. And then we're going to go get all the floor tiles. We'll lay floor tile in here and the toilet area, the half bath, the other bath, and the laundry room. Um, so I want to tell you guys a story because I know you guys like stories. Uh, somebody told me a long, long time ago that hell is like a banquet table. And everything in the world that you would ever want to eat is up and down this banquet table. Delicious, just smells great, looks great, and you're like, ah, I want to eat that. But your arms are locked at the elbows, so you can't get the food up to your mouth. So you're just starving, right? And you're miserable and frustrated because like that's right in front of you, the thing that you want, and you're being tempted by it, but you can't actually be satisfied by this. And I thought, that does not sound pleasant. And then they said, heaven is the exact same banquet table filled with all the exact same food, just tempting you and delicious and whatever, and your arms are still locked at the elbows. But people are feeding each other. So they have taken a difficult, uncomfortable situation and adapted and learned to modify and be kind to each other and help each other out, at which point something that was torturous and horrible now becomes enjoyable and a pleasant experience. So uh, that's not really what heaven and hell are like, in case you look it up in the Bible and you want to fact check me, it's not accurate, but I thought it was a cool story uh, because we can take the bad situations in life and be kind to each other and make them into better situations. Anyway, we're going to get back to work and we'll see you soon. Still watching, I see. All right, so today we pour this pan, we lay this tile, 
We also laid the tile in the other bathroom under the shower. Then we laid that floor. Then we laid this half bath floor. We're about to lay this floor. Then we got to do the laundry floor. But we also laid this pebble stone, and that's what I want to show you. So the lighting I've realized is not amazing, but we just think that this is really cool. So pebbles grow like this. They have pebble farms, and in these pebble farms, they um, they keep them very smooth and flat, and they pour the they put um, pebble seeds in there, and then they keep them in containers, and then they grow, and then they stop at a certain point, and they lay them out on sheets, and then they sell them to us like that. Which I had no idea that you could even buy pebble seeds, but I mean, wow, right? So also. Uh, I realize I can't say this out loud because the last time I did, I got shut down from Facebook and YouTube. But I just want to say that there's something that happened on Wednesday that allows facial nudity, and I'm really into that. Also, uh, when the quarantine hit, I bought literally all the toilet paper, probably six or seven truckloads, like 18 wheelers, filled with toilet paper just for myself. Um, and now I'm wondering, like, if you freeze it, how long is that toilet paper good for? Because that's not my area of expertise. My area of expertise is panic. Hmm. You guys again, huh? Well, I'm happy to see you. All right, so what did we do today? We did some grouting. We did some laminate. Um, let me show you around. Lighting is really bad right now. We don't have power yet. I apologize. But let me just show you, and hopefully you can see some stuff. So we did all this laminate in here, which is really, I think, beautiful. And then we grabbed all this tile, this little bit of film on it, whatever. And you know, you're not gonna be able to see any of this stuff. So let's just, you know, move it, moving on. Uh, but we also did this laminate here, and most of this in the kitchen. But then people came by and wanted to talk. And I gotta tell you, I love talking to people. I really do. I think it's wonderful. And you know what? I like to hear people's stories. Um, and I'd like to hear you guys' stories. Because I am sure that right now you're probably like, ooh, I'm mad about whatever, fill in the blank. And you're just thinking, I just wish that I had something to make me feel happy. Well, I'm here for you. Okay, so my challenge to you is think about somebody who has helped you and didn't ask for anything in return. They were just like, swooped right in, right in the nick of time, and helped you with something and brightened your day. It can't be me because obviously I don't help people, I'm not into that sort of thing. But I would love it if you shared it. You can get a video, like do a video or you can just run it out there or whatever you guys want to do. I want to tell you one, I have thousands and thousands and thousands of stories of where people help me out. I'm just like, I'm so grateful for you as a friend and as a person. Um, but so let me think, in 1990, so 31 years ago, I guess I was like 17, and I was building a log cabin up in Washington State. And um, I didn't know what the world I was doing, but you know, whatever. And I'd saved $5,000 working, making $5 an hour at Applebee's as a dishwasher. And then I bought a camper trailer and gave everything I had away and kind of sold all my stuff. And we drove from North Carolina all the way to Washington State. And then bought 20 acres of land, and then hand dug a well, and hand dug an outhouse, and hand dug a fire pit and then built a log cabin out of the trees there. We did all this for less than $5,000, all right? Bought a chainsaw and everything. And then I dug this well, we hit water at three feet and I was pretty happy about that. And then all of a sudden, like a squirrel got into it and died and all the water stunk and whatever. And I was just like, oh, we need to have water because I don't know if you know this, but our bodies are mostly water. And so we have to drink a lot of it. We were pretty much out of the money. It was getting close to winter time. And this guy in town, everybody in town, it was a small town, had heard about this crazy kid and his mom out there building a log cabin out in the woods. That was me, I was a crazy kid. And um, this guy came by, potty mouth, potty mouth. Uh, his name was Don Giddings, super nice guy. Came out there, he looks, he goes, John, what you need to do, we need to get a backhoe out here and dig you a hole about 20 feet deep stick a culvert in there, put a bunch of gravel around it, perforate the holes, put a pump in there, and make you a well house. And I'm like, well, how much is that gonna cost? And uh, he told me, and I was like, well, I can't even afford, uh, like, nothing, like, I'm dead broke. And the guy just looks at me and goes, I've had hard times before, too. And he came out there with his own backhoe, backhoe, sorry, and he dug me a well and put in a culvert at his expense, drilled holes in it, 
put a bunch of gravel in at his expense, put in a well at his expense, and our land was way off the road, and so he took his grader and everything, and he graded me a road down the mountain to the road for free. And just was like, you know what? Don't mention it. And I will never forget the fact that that guy helped me when I really, really needed it. I heard, and I don't know for sure, that years later he died. Um, yeah, I mean, we're all gonna die one day. But I just want you guys to know that if it comes time on Judgment Day and God looks at me for any of you guys and he says, what's your testimony about this person? I love that person and I'm only gonna say good things about you. And that goes for literally any of you guys watching this. Like, I don't care how bad you've been to me. If God comes to me and goes, John, what's your, what's your testimony to this person? I'll be like, I love that person and I want them to have mercy. Um, anyway, so I would love to hear your stories of when somebody helped you guys because these are the kind of things that write our names. Oh, hey there. You guys again, huh? Well, <clears throat> I'm laying some laminate floor. This is a luxury vinyl plank, okay? And so what this means is it's 100% waterproof. It's got a pad on the back, which is nice, so it doesn't uh, make that clank any clanky sound. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how easy this is to install. Okay, so you notice that there's a, there's a tongue side and there's a groove side, okay? So one goes into the other, I'll show you. Just like this, just comes in here at a 45 degree angle, and then that's it, it just snaps in place, right? So to measure this, you can do it the hard way, or you can do it like this. You just come here, be like, I wanna measure that, right? I put something underneath it so I don't get scratch marks all over the place. Get a square, score it. which is pretty cool. So then you make sure that you're over here on this side, snapped in, you got a rubber mallet. Bam. Right? And there's also that. Ah, then you do another one. Let's see. Oh, it's more than a full one. That's good. So here's the full one, pretty simple. Just put that in. And then we'll cut this one too. But I want to show you guys how we do the um, Starters and stuff. Okay, so there's starters and finishers because this is directional. So all the ones that we cut on the finish side, then the, the leftovers are the starters over here. So now we just take these and snap them into place. And it's pretty easy. Um, so in case your house floods because maybe your pipe parts or something, this is 100% water. I've seen pictures where they've got this like submerged in water and nothing. It, it doesn't decompose at all, which is pretty much interesting. So, this is how you do it. And it goes pretty quick. This, we got about 1,540 square feet. In about seven and a half minutes. I only exaggerate about 500% of the time, so I don't believe anything you can say. It's hard to argue facts aren't real. to get to the end. But that's how you do it. That's how you lay on the floor. Um, what do you want to talk about? You got anything? Nothing? Okay. Well, I want to talk about hmm, the fact that I tried to go to the library, but they were booked. Um, so we got all the laminate laid today, the luxury vinyl plant. This is part of the closet. There's the his and her closet. There's another part of the closet. Um, here, let's look. That's the tile, and there's more tile. That's what we did the other day. Here's more tile. It's all the master bathroom. Then we did all this master bedroom. Um, planet. All the living room. We had tile in the half bath. We got these cabinets in. Uh, we got tile in the laundry room. We got all this dining room, office area, whatever. We got all this bedroom, bathroom, bedroom, bedroom, and then the um, closets, obviously. So we're very happy about that. Now, I want you guys to think, you might be sitting there thinking to yourself, self, I am depressed and I'm sad because I don't have everything that I want. Maybe you didn't get a pony, or maybe you feel like other people have more than you. And I just want to tell you that um, other people are happy with less than what you have. So I hope that encourages you 
to be happy with what you have. Also, uh, a lot of times our salvation comes through our suffering. And people don't really talk about this because nobody wants to hear about suffering and uh, whatever. But if you are being honest with yourself and you look back at your life, you'd probably be like, these were really hard times. But had that hard time not happened to you, it wouldn't have led you to the place where you became better. And a lot of times we don't change until the pain is great enough. And so those hard times were there to make you better, not better. So don't be sad about that. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday. I'm going to uh, get done ridiculously early today because I have uh, something I need to do. So tomorrow we're gonna put doors in, put trim in, and it will make a tremendous difference. Right now it looks very raw still, but you will notice that once we get doors and trim, and then caulk and paint all this stuff, you'll be like, that is amazing. And then we should get granite here on the counters uh, in the next couple of days. He had to stall for some reason, but it's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be absolute black um, granite and then we're gonna have undermount sinks and everything. So good morning. So um, I have not talked to you guys all week because I had an abscess tooth and I had to go to the um, dentist and then he drilled in my face and then took it out as, as a horror story. Um, but they they went to put something back in there. They're like, we're gonna have to put an implant. I'm like, okay. And they I went to Mexico because I was trying to save, save some money. <laughs> and they dug back and they like start putting this thing and I'm like, that's a horse molar. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he unscrewed it and dug back in. They like, he got a boar tooth. I'm like, no, dude, I'm a human being. He's like, oh, sorry. So he reached back and puts in this like, uh, like an elephant tusk. I'm like, seriously? So he said, I'm gonna make you a good one, but it's gonna take a while. So my face has been hurting. But Fidel here, does amazing granite work. Look at this. Is this not beautiful? So Fidel has magic and experience and helpers. And look how beautiful this is. You want to tell them about it? Well, uh, I'm with Fidel's Howard Floors uh, company, and uh, there's some of my guys working here. We do granite, hardwood floors, and uh, he's busy. His phone never stops ringing. I know that. Uh, I think people have been calling me for a little while. But if y'all need any work, just give us a call. And if you need his number, just give me a call or text me or whatever, and I will pass his number on to you. But this is not beautiful. So we put in the undermount sink over here, drill hole so I can put in the faucet. It's beautiful. This is all gorgeous. This is one piece. They brought this in and bless one piece because they're like, Superman. look at your muscles. Show me your muscles. Right here. Uh, look at that. It's unbelievable. <laughs> He's got muscles on his muscles. Right. Let me show you this other thing too. Come on. So we also did this right here with undermount and this one over here also with undermount and i can't really shine the light on it right now but i'll show you later but he also put in this uh, i think i got a little light oh yeah yeah give us some light give us some light um this isn't done yet but he put in this uh bottom for the shower shower ledge the shower ledge i can i can speak english and then <laughs> And then the seat over here is granted as well. So um, he does amazing work. I absolutely love him. I would kiss him on the mouth, but I'm not gay. But I'm thinking about it right now because I mean, this looks really, really good. So um, anything else you would tell him? You do hardwoods too, right? So you can yes, refinish hardwood floors, yes. lay hardwood. Yeah, lay tile. Stain and finish, yes. Mm -hmm. So just give us a call. Call John and John will set y'all up. Yep, here, show your number. That'll get you. Get close on that thing. Yeah, you just you know, physically come closer, it's okay. Get that number. Call that man. Don't be stupid. He will take care of you. Yep. Yeah, have a good day. He will nice like pet you and like put a nice like a cool cloth on your head. <laughs> <laughs> All the things that you need. Right? Oh you might yeah. take care of it. Like do the work. Yeah, yeah. I really need to get some sleep. Alright. Love you guys. Talk to you. How are you guys doing? So I've been busy today. And I didn't make videos, and I apologize. We were doing all kinds of cool things. We did, um, we got all the door jams in, and we got everything cocked, and we got all the face boards in, and the window sills in. And we did this backsplash, we did some grout, we got the sink and faucet in. Uh, the other day, we got this granite put in, uh, and we did some other stuff. So that's pretty exciting, and we're happy. So I want to tell you guys a fun story. And in this story, I'm a young teenager, an old teenager, maybe young 20s, okay? At the time, I didn't really understand how interest worked, but I thought I understood how interest worked. And so I was talking about, uh, like, I'm gonna save up enough money to pay for a house cash because I don't wanna uh, pay all that interest. And when I said that, my, she was my fiance at the time, her uh, grandmother just looks at me like I'm stupid and goes, but you pay rent. 
And she, that's all she said. She didn't sit there and explain and do a bunch of math and amortization charts and all kinds of things. She just goes, but you're paying rent. And so I did the math. And so I want you guys to do the math. So let's just say that you have a relatively inexpensive rent, like $1,000 a month. I think that's pretty cheap right now. I don't know, it's been a long time since I've paid rent. If you're paying $1,000 a month in rent times 12 months, that's $12,000 a year. And then you multiply that side by say 20 years. That's $240,000. So that could have easily bought you a house, um, a pretty decent house, not an amazing house, but a pretty decent one. And you would have built equity and you would probably have built in equity um, anyway. So there's a whole lot of advantages to owning your own home. And then you get pride of ownership. You can fix the things that you want to fix. You don't have to wait on the landlord, blah, blah, blah. It's just, there's so many advantages to owning a home. And so at that moment when she said, but you're paying rent, I was like, you know, you're right. And quickly I was like, how fast can I get a mortgage? And I bought something very inexpensive, something that I could afford, okay? The, the first house I bought, the first I built a log cabin when I was 17, but when I was 22, I bought a house for $15,000. It was condemned. I spent another 25,000. It was a 700 square foot house. I made 1,880 square feet uh, and redid the whole thing. And I really learned a lot uh, doing that. But because of that, uh, so I had 40,000 in it. I lived in it for seven years and then I sold it for $87,000. So basically, if you think about it like that, I lived in that house for free for seven years and made $47,000. It's really like the smart thing to do because once you pay rent, it's just, it's gone. That's not gonna happen again. You're never gonna see that money again. But if you're putting it into a mortgage, then you will see that money again. And, and chances are the home prices are gonna continue to rise steadily. And so it's just a, just a smart thing to do. Now here's another thing. Let's say you're already a homeowner. Uh, if you make one extra payment a year, and it depends on your interest rate, but if you make one extra payment a year, whatever your payment is, let's say it's $1,000, and you pay an extra $1,000 a year, you will knock 15 years off of your mortgage. If you pay bi-weekly instead of monthly, so if you're $1,000 a month, but instead you pay $500 every two weeks, you will knock 15 years off of your mortgage. It's a pretty big deal. If you can afford to put anything towards principal, so you're paying like a little bit of principal, which is like, let's say that you owe $200,000. Well, like, I don't know, 200 bucks of that, of your payment goes towards that 200,000. And then a lot of it goes to interest. And then some of it goes to property taxes and um, insurance and things like that. So you're only paying a little bit, but anything that you pay on top of that makes a big difference. And so if you could afford to pay another $50 or $100 or whatever you can afford to pay every month, you will exponentially <clears throat> knock down your mortgage to the point where you actually own your house pretty quick. And I've owned, I think, 67 houses now. I flip houses too. But, uh, and I grew up poor. The longest it's taken me to pay off a house is three and a half years. So it's very possible. And when I was very young, I realized that 40% of homeowners own their house outright, which means that if there's 100 homeowners, 40 of those don't have a mortgage at all. They just own their house and that's it. Now, statistically speaking, those are usually older people, but you can definitely beat the odds. And I would just strongly encourage you to buy a house if you can and make big payments on that because that's your biggest investment. And in I mean, obviously your eternity, getting yourself right with God is your biggest, most important investment. But besides that, it's usually your house and then your car and business and things like that. So hopefully that helps you guys. Also, by the way, this house will be on the market pretty quick. And so if you want this house, then please, by all means, buy it. But um, we will have more stuff done tomorrow. Hopefully I'll have electricity soon. Waiting for diamonds, for coal to turn into diamonds, takes a painfully long time, but not quite as long as waiting on the government to do what they said they're gonna do. So permits are just a nightmare. Anyway, have a good Good morning or afternoon or whatever time it is when you're watching this. Right here with me, I've got one of the premier concrete wizards in the world, Jared Boone. What's the name of your company? It's Boone Construction Services. How did you come up with that name? Uh, I don't know. I, I, it just came to me in a dream. Yeah, I, it was just like, man, I don't know. I think it was prophetic. Somebody prophetically said, hey, why not? Because I, I just see God saying Boone in construction service. And I was like, okay, let's do it. You're like, that's kind of what I do. It yeah, makes sense. It now. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. God inspired. I, I like it. I like that. So, um, 
you guys are going to pour concrete for driveway and for sidewalk today, right? Yes, sir. And before uh, everybody had cars, did you still have to pour concrete for driveways? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Like back in the Roman times, well, Middle they, Ages? They, it's a different kind of concrete mixture. Hmm. Yeah. What they put in it? Uh, I don't know. Egyptians. They put in Egyptians in there. It's the only thing that makes Egyptian sense. bones. Yeah. Yep. Egyptian bones yeah. and then straw. And that's how they made it. Okay. Yeah, yep. makes sense. So this reminds me of a good story. There's a flood coming. There's a storm coming. And this guy's like, God, please deliver me from this storm. And please deliver me from this flood. And so uh, he's in there and the water's rising up. And he's like, oh, this is getting bad. And somebody comes by with a boat. And they're like, buddy, you need a ride? We can get you out of here. He's like, no, no. God's going to deliver me. He's like, uh, okay. So some more time passes and the water gets up higher and higher and somebody comes by with another boat and they're like, hey, um, you need a ride? He goes, no, no, a guy's going to deliver me. And they're like, oh, all right. He finally swims out and gets up on his roof and he's up there and the water's coming up and he's like tiptoeing up or whatever. And the helicopter flies over and they drop a ladder and they're like, buddy, grab the ladder. And he's like, it's cool. Guy's going to deliver me. And then what happens? I don't think he made it. He drowns. He dies. Yeah. And he, he gets up to the pearly gates and he's up there. And uh, he finally gets to meet God and says, God, I pray that you deliver me and you didn't. You failed me. And you know what he said? I sent two boats and a helicopter. What else do you need? All right. So sometimes the answer that we need is very practical and it's right in front of us. We're like, oh, man, I want some magical, ethereal, whatever, spiritual sounding thing. And God's like, I sent you what you asked for. Pay attention. Amen. Right? Yeah.